Hi, welcome to the Blueprints of Clawhammer Banjo. My name is Tom Collins, and today I'm going to show you how to tune a banjo. As a musician, you should be confident and fast at tuning your instrument. I'm going to show you the ways to do that today. The other added benefit of learning how to tune your instrument well and confidently is that in the process of learning how to tune well, you're also learning how to hear well and how to discern pitches. So it is fantastic ear training for you as a musician. I wanna clarify one thing in particular at the top of this video, and that is these things. This is a contact tuner. These are amazing if the room is loud. Otherwise, this stays in the case. I don't use it. The other thing I don't like about it is I end up tuning with my eyes, and a lot of students come into a lesson with these, and they end up just looking at the screen and tuning with their eyes and watching a needle. Your ears are way better than this piece of plastic. You need to learn how to hear and learn how to trust those ears so you don't have to use this. So what are my preferred ways of generating a tone? I've got two in the studio that I rely on daily. My favorite, of course, you guys know me by now, I love analog, tuning forks. This one's in A, this one's in G. I love analog because these never run out of batteries. I can chuck them in a case. They're lightweight, they don't break. They're always with me wherever I go and they are fantastic ways to get your reference pitch to begin to tune your instrument. The other way I use more and more these days because it's just so convenient is I use an app on my phone to generate a pitch. This is Instuner. I have no relationship to the company at all. I just use it almost daily and it generates a chromatic scale. It's really fun to kind of do that. Um, that's my G and I use that to get my reference pitch on the fifth string and then I tune out from there. So one of my big things with my students is we get a reference pitch and then I encourage the student to tune in big moves. I always say that, if you've been here, you've probably heard me say that. When we tune, we use big moves because this kind of thing, this is what I see all the time. The problem with that is, The problem with that incremental tuning is that the human ear can discern big intervals easier than it can discern these micro intervals. And it gets very confusing to the ear when we do these micro little motions and tune down. It takes a student forever to get into tune that way. So let me show you how I get into double C tuning lightning fast. First of all, I tune the second string first. That B is going up a half step to a C. Big turn, quarter to, uh, shy of a quarter turn. Fine tune it. Now I use my fourth string. Now I'm in double C. Easy as pie. Going back to G, this goes up to a D. And this second string drops down to a B. And then I fine tune. All right, you wanna see it again. Second string goes up to a C. Fourth string down to a C. In, done, ready to play. Now I will probably fine tune, and if I were preparing for a recording or a video, I would use my trusty tuning fork, bang it on my knee, touch it to the bridge of the head, Good, and then I'd work out from there using that reference pitch.
and I'm in double C tuning. Now, this did not happen for me overnight. This was not a skill that I started playing the banjo with. I had to develop it in time. But the more I did it, the more I practiced tuning, not only could I confidently get into a tuning faster, but I began to hear better. I could discern the intervals between notes better and I was just simply better at listening to the instrument. Now let me give you some additional tips that could help you when you're in double C tuning. One of the little things, one of the little secrets I have for sweetening double C is I run my first string just a tiny bit flat. So if I were to go true, um, a true tone here, that's a D generating my pitch here. That's a true D. When I'm in my one chord, that note, even though it's right, it just sounds a little strident to me. So I flatten just a tiny bit my first string. And it doesn't interfere with me playing with anybody else. It sounds totally fine. It's really, really subtle, but it's something I do every time I go into double C. I tune my second string, tune my fourth string, verify everything's correct, and then I just flat that first string just ever so slightly to give a little sweetness to that one chord. And I just like the way that sound. Nobody told me to do that. It's just something I noticed. The more I tuned, the more I found my tastes for tuning, and I flattened it a little bit. A lot of people think that a tuning is a tuning no matter what. You just tune to what the dial tells you and you're done. But the more I listened to what I was doing, the more I enjoyed tweaking that tuning, sweetening it just a little bit to suit my own tastes. And that's one of the powerful reasons why you want to learn how to tune yourself and why you would want to use an external pitch to learn how to hear the intervals rather than looking at a meter and tuning with your eyes. All right, so we've learned how to tune from G to double C, but what if, like at the beginning of the video, my banjo is totally horribly out of tune? Well, I still use my reference pitch on the fifth string. I'll go to G. It's up. And because I've memorized the sound of G tuning, I can get into G tuning pretty fast. And then I check that pitch again because tuning the instrument can throw the other strings out of whack. So you have to do several passes. Something I often do is I will verify that I'm in good tuning, especially if I'm coming out of it from scratch like that. I'll make the unison with my fifth fret first string against the fifth string. Most common banjo tunings do have that as a unison. Not all of them though. And then from there, from G, I'll go to double C, so just like we did before. Flatten that first string just a little bit. There, lightning fast, easy as pie. Now, I'm used to the sounds of these tunings. Years and years of tuning, tuning every single day, has taught me how to tune really, really fast. You guys may not have that experience yet, and that's okay, I didn't have that when I was first starting either. So if you try this method of tuning from the fifth string and you start to struggle, that's okay. Feel free to use reference pitches for the entire tuning, that's okay. That's how I did it when I was starting. So I would just simply get my G, then I would get my C, which is the fourth string. 
Then I would get a G, third string, another C, and then D is my first string. And I could use the reference pitches all the way through the tuning. It may take you several passes, but that's how I started to learn how to match pitches. And as I got more and more confident, I started abandoning the per string pitch generation and just use my fifth string, get that matched to an external source and worked out from there. It's liberating to be able to simply match the fifth string pitch to an external source and just put that tuner down and work from the fifth string on out and be able to get into tunings very quickly. It takes a while to do that though, so don't be afraid to use a reference pitch for every string until you gain the confidence to just do it from the fifth string. Tuning your instrument is an essential skill, and it's a skill just like any other. If you practice it, you'll get better at it. A lot of people struggle with tuning the instruments. I've had people book lessons and come in just to get their strings changed and their instruments tuned. And it's no fault of theirs. It can feel very intimidating. But if you simply use a reference pitch, just one reference pitch, and start to learn how to hear if strings are in tune from that fifth string on down, you will be a better player in the end and you'll certainly be more confident with your instrument. All right, that's it today. The next video will be about basic claw hammer and how to do it right. I wanted to get the holding and the tuning out of the way because I think that those are overlooked elements to get you more comfortable on the instrument. But now that we are done with that, we can move on to the lessons proper. We will be playing together in the very next video. I hope you join me next time on Banjo Quest.